Every year, one in four of us will experience a common mental health problem, such as anxiety, depression, drug and alcohol abuse, or eating disorders. Many more people may be experiencing emotional distress and don't seek help from their doctor. But the government tells us in reports that they can't afford to invest the money needed to help everyone who might benefit from support. At the moment, over 75% of people who experience symptoms of anxiety and depression get no treatment. The way that the NHS is set up doesn't help. Many services are still traditionally delivered Monday to Friday, 9 to 5, in a healthcare setting, which means lots of people can't access care easily, and sometimes people just feel nervous talking to someone face to face about their problems. One way we can improve the situation is to restructure services to be more accessible and also empower people to access information so that they understand and manage their own health better. Technology can help us do this. First off, what do we mean by technology? The use of technology to support people emotionally isn't a new thing. The Samaritans, Childline and other phone lines have provided valuable crisis support for people for a long time. In more recent years, Technology has been used to access information, communicate with health professionals, chat with people in a similar situation to ourselves and monitor our own symptoms. We can even use video games to improve our memory, manage phobias and take exercise and help people socialise outside of their home. Technology is also playing a big role in how doctors manage data and communicate with one another. And this use of technology in healthcare makes sense. For a start, more and more people in the UK use technology in their daily life. Most adults own a mobile phone and have access to the internet, and nearly half the population uses social media. In many homes now, you'll find some kind of video gaming technology, and so we're getting really comfortable using it. And people want to use technology to manage their own health, as nearly half of the people using the internet do so to access health information. Technology can increase availability of services, so no matter where you live, you can access care. Technology can also provide people with support out of hours. Importantly, technology gives people choice, options, a different way to access services and take control of their health. But we have a lot of work to do. Many people are not aware of the opportunities that technology presents. We need to work hard to inform the public and health providers about technology available and how it can be used in different ways. Not everyone has access to technology, and we know that technology isn't for everyone. Some people will like it more than others. We need to find out who these people are and provide appropriate support when needed. We need to evaluate new technology that changes all the time and ensure it is used in the public's interest. In short, we need to find out how we can provide the highest quality care and ensure people's safety when we aren't all in the same place at the same time. We're at an exciting stage of development. In many instances, technology works. Therapies delivered over the phone or computer can be as effective as face-to-face -face therapy. And most people are satisfied with the care they receive this way. We can see the potential in technology to help people improve and maintain their mental health. At the University of Sheffield, in the heart of the city, a new centre has been established, the Centre for Assistive Technology and Connected Healthcare, that's CATCH for short. We are a group of driven researchers with a world-class reputation. We have strong focus on co-design, and that means that products and services are being developed and tested in collaboration with people who will ultimately be using them. So to find out more and get involved, stay in touch on Twitter or go to our website for more information.